Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style self-development and personal grooming. Now I know the summertime is when many of us take our annual vacation, our holidays, and it's an opportunity to catch up with the reading that we all love to indulge ourselves with when we're away from the office or from the workplace or however you spend your professional days. Now, this year, I had my holiday rather early in May. So I've done some of my summer reading early and I'm going to share five books which I've read over the last month, which I think you may enjoy for your summer reading. They're all a little bit different. Some are a little bit edgy, some somewhat more comfortable. But let me tell you, my five choices for summer reading in 2024. Let me begin with a book which I will openly say was the most disturbing book that I've read in the last several years. And I'll tell you for why. Now, let me tell you what it is, first of all. It's a book called Notice, which is by American authoress Heather Lewis. Now, Heather Lewis is no longer with us. She took her own life a number of years ago. She was a deeply disturbed young woman, as I understand. And this was a book which was posthumously published after her death. And it is quite a read, I can tell you. I found this book because it was recommended to me by a YouTuber called Criminoli, who I often go to for good, interesting book reviews. And I bought this book, and let me tell you, it is not a simple A to B read. In simple terms, the book is about a, our subject of the book, should I say, is a young woman called Nina. Now, she is a prostitute. She suffers with mental health problems and she finds herself recently bereaved and she is working as a sex worker, not because she needs the money, but I think because she craves the human interaction. And on one occasion, she goes home with a man who is a sadist and she enters into a situation involving the man, his wife, and it becomes very deeply troubling and uncomfortable. It's a very sexually explicit book. It's not easy to read, but she ends up going into a mental institution in which she is sexually abused by the staff. She then ends up having a same-sex relationship with her psychiatrist and it gets deeper and darker, more complex. Let me tell you, it, you end up coming out of this book and you feel like you've gone through the ringer of life with Nina. However, it is a good read and I can recommend it. If you like a book which is challenging, which is dark, which is edgy, and it's certainly something which adds uh, a theme to your area of knowledge which you may not previously have had, but not for light reading and not for minors. Now the next book I'm going to recommend for you is Close to Home by Michael McGee. It is a debut novel by Michael McGee and it won a number of literary awards, very highly regarded. I read this book for a book club in my local town. I actually went to the book club and it was very well thought of by everybody who read it myself included. Now the story involves our protagonist who is a Northern Irish lad called Sean and he's from just after the troubles sorted, sorted themselves out, settled down a bit in Northern Ireland and the story really is a coming of age story because he's been away to the mainland in UK uh, to university. He returns to Ireland and it is really about him trying to settle back into the community that he came from originally before he enriched himself with higher education. And he really struggles to settle back in. There's an unrequited love story with an old uh, girlfriend of his from his childhood days. And it's a struggle from beginning to end. He's trying to find work. He's trying to find somewhere to live. He's trying to find his place in the society of Northern Ireland, uh, which has changed a lot. He's from a very, uh, troubled family. His brother is mentally ill, substance addiction, mother's a widow, struggling to make ends meet, 
ill as well. Um, it, it is a little dark in so much as there's not a lot of cheer. It's a little bit depressing, but you would read this, you would enjoy this if you liked Train Spotting by Irvine Welsh. Same sort of thing. It's the, it follows a young chap as he's trying to find his way in the world, and it's a tough world in which he lives. But I enjoyed it. So did everybody else in my book club. It's certainly a good read, uh, and you will come away from it having learned something about society in Northern Ireland, if nothing else. Now, those first two books were quite difficult reads, to be honest. They're not light and cheerful ones. The next book is a little more of a used formula, which you'll all be familiar with. The old police procedural whodunit. And it's called Paradise, and it's by Patricia Wolfe. Now, this is her second novel. The first novel was called Outback, and it features the same hero, a chap called, let me remind myself, Lucas Walker, who's a detective sergeant in the Australian Federal Police, so a bit like the FBI, but in Australia. And um, although it's the second in a series, you don't need to have read the first, it's quite standalone. In the first one, he was kind of out in the outback, as the name of the book would suggest, and he investigates a missing tourist. In this one, he finds himself on the Australian Gold Coast, recovering from the events of the first novel, and he ends up getting drawn into quite a complex um, organised crime group, which are uh, a biker gang. He's also, at the same time, involved with the investigation of a rather nasty home invasion murder involving a mother and a young child. So there's a lot going on, but it's actually a really good read. It's, it tells us a lot about the, the life of uh, Australia a little, part of the world where many of us, you know, we don't get to visit very often. It's so far away from our Western world, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's a third book about to be published called Opal, featuring the same character. And as I say, this is one, I read this on holiday, lying by the side of the pool in Oman, and I really enjoyed it. I read it over just about two days. It's a good thumping story, and it's just good old-fashioned police who done it. You'll enjoy it. Now, my next book is a departure from the world of fiction. It is a travel writing book, because I like to read about places and journeys around the world. It just makes these places come alive in my mind. And I encountered this book, which is called The Rum Jungle Hotel, written by Jonathan Evans, when I attended a literary festival, um, maybe about two months ago. And the author, Jonathan Evans, read some excerpts from this book in that festival. And I enjoyed it so much, I bought the book from him after the actual event. Um, and it just really tells the story of this man, Jonathan Evans, at an earlier phase of his life, I'm guessing in the 1960s, when he was on the hippie trail, when travel was not quite as open to so many people and easy to find as it is today. Uh, you know, he went on the Overland Trail to Tehran, he went to Egypt, he found himself traveling, you know, the hippie trail in Spain and Australia and other parts of the world. And it's lots of short little stories about his travels. Many are quite funny, some are very charming, uh, some you have your heart in your mouth, but there are lots of little stories. So it's an ideal book if you're not a big reader, you don't want to perhaps invest, you know, a huge amount of time in a novel, maybe you're on holiday, or maybe you just like to pick a book up and read, you know, one story, put it down, come back to it a week later. It's a great way of reading and learning about this guy's travels and his adventures. Um, I would recommend that one. Good for a bit of fun. I took this one on holiday with me as well. And when I wasn't reading Paradise, I was dipping into this one for shorter hits of literary excitement. Now, my last recommendation for you today is a book which I'm still at the very tail end of. As you can see, I'm still reading this one. And I've got to read it in two days because it is the book of the month for my current book club. So I bought this one, wouldn't have bought it. It's not the sort of book I would perhaps choose, uh, but because it was in my book club, I picked it up and it's been a thumping read. I have really enjoyed it. It's called The Lost Apothecary and it's by Sarah Penner. Now again, it's a debut novel 
First time she's written a book and she's done very well. It's an interesting concept, pure fiction, but it's told over two time zones or time frames, I should say. It's told in the present day in the eyes of an American tourist who's visiting London. She's got an interest in history. She goes on a mudlarking tour on the banks of the River Thames and she finds a historic item in the mud alongside the river and then she goes on to research it. And at the same time as we're reading about that item through her eyes, as she's looking back in time, the book takes us on an alternative timeline, which vies for our attention. So one chapter, you get the present day. The next chapter, you go back in time to the late 1700s, when that historical item, which was found by our main protagonist, was living its first life in the hands of the lost apothecary, who is, a poisoner of people to order. It's an interesting story. Um, it's got a real good twist in the tale. I'm just finishing it now. I'll finish this later this afternoon, just in time for my book club discussion on Tuesday. But I, this was probably of the five books I've talked to about today. This is the one which I've enjoyed reading the most. I've read it in about three days. So you can see it's one which has captured my imagination. It would normally have taken me twice that long to read a book like this, but yeah, really good fun. Another great one if you're heading on holiday and you don't want something challenging to read or disturbing to read or sexually explicit, you just want something which is a damn good story and I reckon might make it to the silver screen at some point in the future. Could make a good film out of that one. Great debut uh, novel by Sarah Penner. So there we go. Those were my five book recommendations for your summer holidays. Let me know which ones you like. If I can help you out, I will put them in uh, Amazon links in the show notes below if you want to go and track them down and uh, make it easier for you. But let me know if you enjoy them, if you read them. So there we go. Until the next time, take care, folks. Don't forget, like, subscribe, drop me an email, drop me a comment, buy me a coffee, become a patron. It would be great to interact with you in some way. So until the next time, take care and I'll see you again very soon.